The total cost for 1,081 pounds of beef was $5,481, for a little under $5.50 a pound. Two years ago, in 2020, I saw what was happening around us and I said, I need to make some food. So I dived in and I looked for books on how to raise grass-fed beef and came across Salad Bar Beef by Joel Salatin. This book is available, by the way, at shopshepherdist.com and I would love if you would buy it there and support my work. Before 2020, I had literally zero experience with livestock. In fact, the only live animal I had ever raised was a hamster when I was eight years old. And Salad Bar Beef was one of the first books I read that made me think, maybe I can actually do this. But in today's video, I am just going to break this down for you on how much it cost me to raise this beef, the process of raising it, and how I acquired that livestock. There are ultimately two ways you can go about raising grass-fed beef, and number one is to buy steers that a rancher has already raised to a certain point and feed them out and finish them. And number two is to buy a breeding pair and that cow will have its offspring. And then you hope that offspring is a steer and raise it for an additional 24 months. Now this process I just described is 33 months from breeding to plate. And the process of buying a steer, if you buy it seven months, is about 18 months. And so timeline was a major deal for me in choosing the steer route over the breeding pair route. Number two is that in livestock and in animal husbandry, a lot of the problems you face with respect to raising that cattle are gonna happen in the breeding, calving, and weaning time period. And so as an absolute beginner in livestock, I chose the steer route. And I bought my steers at seven months old from a local rancher, my friend Carl Abel. Market price at that time was $1.73 per pound for these steers. And he charged me market price plus a 10 cent premium for buying off his pasture and for delivery. These steers were about 500 pounds when they landed on my property. So at $1.83 per pound, I spent about $910 per steer. Now, how much land does it actually take to raise a grass-fed beef steer? And I cannot speak for you. I can only speak for what it required of me. And that was about three acres per head to finish a steer on all grass. This is in a pretty high rainfall area of 40 to 50 inches. And winters are not hard, so year-round grazing is possible. Another question that is often asked is, what kind of pasture grass did you plant for these grass-fed beef steers? And I did not plant any pasture grass. In the entire 18 months these were here, they grazed whatever grew on its own. And that's with the exception of one bag of ryegrass and one bag of crimson clover that I did plant on a small four acre portion of our pasture. The sheep had been grazing on this pasture for about two years before the steers came on. They ate out a lot of the weeds and cleared the way for the pasture grass to really take over in a way that benefited the larger cattle. Breed and body type are something you want to pay attention to when it comes to finishing an animal on an all-grass system. You want to look for short legs and a big brisket. And what I ultimately ended up with on my property were two Hereford steers and one black baldy, which is a Hereford Angus cross. You want to avoid the larger framed cattle because these cattle have basically been bred up for a feedlot style situation and not a grass-based system. So when you see long legs, big bones, just steer clear and go for something short and stout. Aside from the cost of the animal, I had two primary costs. Number one was the cost of overwintering, and number two was the cost of processing. Now, some would cite the cost of land as needing to be accounted for. This was family land that was lying largely dormant, aside from that small flock of 25 sheep that I ultimately bought out. I worked out an arrangement with my family that I would supply them with all of the grass-fed beef that they wanted at cost in exchange for the grazing land. And I would really encourage you guys to do the exact same thing. Look for underutilized resources and look for ways to serve people in exchange for the usage of that resource. And I have to be honest with you guys because the very first time I proposed this idea of raising grass-fed beef on this family land, the owner was not entirely for the idea. But as he watched these animals graze, as he watched that they weren't a bunch of crazy cows running around on his pasture, but they were gentle to the management that I put in with them. And he watched the pasture improve under their grazing. He became totally sold out to the idea. So much so that by the end of this process, we opened up those boxes. He got first pick of what he wanted and he was ready to go with even more cows. So guys, take that and maybe even share this video with somebody who might be on the fence about letting you use their resource. Because I believe there are so many 
underutilized resources out there that just need a group of people, maybe like you and me, to manage those resources and bring them to an end product that we all need, which is food. Cost number two was the cost of overwintering. The first winter I spent $525 to overwinter three yearling steers. And the second winter I spent $168 to overwinter three nearly full grown steers. If you guys want some more information on what I did in the second year, which was grazing stockpile, you can look at this video right here, it gives you an explanation. That first year I fed hay as much as they could eat over winter, and that was about seven round bales. In addition to this, I fed nine bags of cattle cubes and two bags of beef cow mineral. And in addition to this, they just basically had free reign over 17 acres. I didn't really confine them. I didn't tightly paddock graze them. I let them eat as much as they wanted and would move them to a new pasture maybe once every two to three weeks. And then I'd bring the sheep flock through after them to intensively graze what was left over. Now this was very good. In the first year, these steers were absolutely fat. And a note that I want to make here is that in that first year, the steer is making all of the fat cells that will ultimately create that marbling in the meat at the end of its life. So even though you're not finishing it in the first year, you need to really make sure, especially around its first birthday, you're just basically stuffing its face because it's the fat cells created at that steer's first birthday that will ultimately be filled with fat at the end of its life. And that's a simple way of explaining it, but it made me extremely grateful that maybe I overdid it in that first overwintering, but it really played out at the end and created an excellent product because I got grass-fed beef that actually had marbling in it. And the second overwintering, I did not do any hay. I just did eight bags of cattle cubes. And this is something that I want to touch on. You guys might be saying cattle cubes on grass-fed beef. This isn't really fair. But the American Grass-Fed Association has a list of approved supplementation, so you can feed a certain amount of supplement as long as it remains supplement and not the primary inputs for their diet. Now ultimately, I advocate for a producer-consumer relationship, and my consumers knew exactly what was going into this beef, and they saw exactly the pasture they were grazing on 100% of the time. So reference that American Grass-Fed Association approved supplementation list, but ultimately make that relationship with your buyer to where they feel comfortable with the food that you are putting on their table. Cost number three was the processing at a state-approved facility. And I created another video up here of the three processing options we have as independent meat growers. And a state facility allows me to resell this meat within the state of Texas. Processing at this facility was $565 per steer for a grand total of $1,695 in processing fees. I rented a bumper pull trailer for $75 and the gas for the round trip to the processor was $90 and I paid my brother $200 to do all of the driving and hauling for the day for a grand total of $2,000 $59.76 on processing day. The total cost for 1,081 pounds of beef was $5,481 for a little under $5.50 a pound. Now this is everything. This is roasts. This is ribeye. This is absolutely everything. And last night we had a Father's Day dinner with some grass-fed ribeye steak. And guys, it was so, so good. I honestly cannot explain the satisfaction of just looking at 27 boxes full of food that I grew on a resource that was largely just laying dormant. And that by God's grace, that food is now on the plate of my family. And ultimately, I wanna bring this around to the reality that if you have the resources to do something like this, you really can do something like this. I actually have three steers right now that are on my pasture that I am ready to sell to anyone who is out there and you watched this video and you said, I am ready to go. I put a link down below to where you can put a deposit on those and actually purchase them straight off of my farm. But I wanna say a special thank you to everybody who's been here from the beginning. That's what this channel has been. It, it was something I launched two years ago and it's just, I never could have expected the level of response that I've gotten. I just wanna take a really quick minute and just say thank you to everybody who has followed. I don't take your watching this for granted. I don't take the fact that you sit here and like my videos and comment and respond for granted. And people often reach out to me and say, I'm, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your farm. And I just, I'm so humbled and I wanna say, please don't stop. Please don't stop praying because I really believe the Lord has a purpose in what I'm doing here for however long he lets it last. And I really wanna thank you guys for being a part of it.